another edition of Grand Sanders Live. I'm your host, Scott Kerman, and I'm joined by my usual cohorts, the Professor, Russ Stevens, and Uncle Joe McLaughlin. Oh, look at our background. Wow, it's oh, beautiful so Boston. Yeah, right, exactly. Wow. wow. I think Joe looks much more attractive with this. Floating in the, floating in the clouds. <laughs> All right. That halo well, that's our special Game 7 low background. Boys. We love Game 7s, mm -hmm. and especially when you win them. <laughs> Nerve-wracking. I've been kind of cranky for the last half an hour. You certainly have been. <laughs> yeah, right. Very crappy tonight. You going to be all right? I'm all right. I'm, all right. I'm rocking my... about Adrian and Maxie at home tonight. <laughs> and Lucas, yeah, yeah but no. Have a dog. You <laughs> <laughs> well, if we lose, I would. Yeah. yeah, the imaginary dog. Well, um, I'm rocking, first of all, the Bobby sure Orr are. jersey. Yes, yeah, so I'm very excited. Uh, William, the intern, is rocking the Orr jersey here. Mm -hmm. A special guest inside the studio, Max Kerman. Wearing the brains. Yeah, yeah, right. And William, the intern's grandmother. So this oh place God. is place hopping awesome. tonight. Celebrities. That's what happens when you have game seven. Yeah. All right, boys. <coughs> There's no need but to talk about anything, but it's time to drop the puck and score the first goal. So key, right? Right, yeah. Because it just takes the edge off of yeah. you. As a oh. fan, I'm just praying that they score. Actually, I need two. Yeah. You only yeah. start breathing when they have two, right? And I don't even want to turn the game on until there's been a goal. Yeah. But the strategy for the St. Louis Blues is if they don't score first, they don't win. I, I think they're just going to come out hot, don't you? In general, in hockey, it's just... The home team usually comes at you hammer and tongs for the first five to ten minutes. You, If you're the road team, you withstand it. Usually you come out playing defense if you're the road team. But, Joe, we uh, we haven't seen that at all. The Bruins coming out early, Russ, have we? Last game. Ma yeah, last game they came out pretty good the, the but first not, time. Not but by and large. Bell. Yeah, I, no. I agree. No. Yeah. yeah. What I've loved this week is just speculation that because it's game seven um, – the, the Blues players are not going to be worried about being suspended. <laughs> right. Well, that was uh, Berube. So no that. holds barred. And they tend not to throw guys out of the game at the time. It's very rare. that You yeah. have to need a 10-minute match penalty um, to get tossed part, from the yeah. game. But, you know, more of the suspensions in the NHL happen after the game now. Well, that's a great point. How much will the refs play in the deciding this game, Joe? I don't think so much. The players, as usual, will decide the game. I don't think the, pl the refs are going to let it get out of hand. Because we don't, Russ, want them to just let the boys play because that means the Blues will do whatever There's they want. Only... Well, the Blues don't want to do that because their penalty kill is not as yeah. good as the Bruins' power. Play. Look, the, the old adage goes the refs swallow the whistles in Game 7. In, in the vast 99% of the Bruins teams that we've watched over our last 40 years of watching Would the Bruins, you want them to swallow the whistle? Tonight, you don't want them to swallow no, no, the whistle. No, absolutely not. Look, it was a disgrace. The Blues are a bunch of freaking punks. Thugs. What they did, a game five at the end of it. Oh, me, for two, though, and he's not even playing. Look, and you, the St. Louis crowd was not well, not receiving that well either. You know, no, that's a classy not. group, the, the St. Louis fans, the Cardinal fans and stuff. And, you know, that one player, uh, blink, you know, Given the, the, the eye. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, he's, After, he's, yeah. A, he's a scratch tonight, I heard. Is that right? Oh, yeah. is that right? Good Look, for them. Can you imagine? These guys have been headhunting. The whole time, and then after this game, they're going to be going in a line. <laughs> yeah, know? right. Yeah, Trust oh, me, yeah. if the Bruins lose, that's going to be an interesting yeah, line. Although you never see that. Like, have you Luchich ever seen a line? Lucic, we saw. Yeah, Lucic yeah. yeah, leaned in and yeah. told the guy. Yeah, I Russ, do remember we see that. With the yeah. yeah, we will. <laughs> yeah, right. Can you bring Lucic back tonight? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Imagine. Maybe he would be, He'd be like the Hanson brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Big Poppy, we'll talk about Big Poppy in a second. Um, the rumor is that Big Poppy, at the very least, will be doing a Skype uh, video uh, from his hospital room. Yep. For the for the seventh that would game be pretty. Crowd. That'd be pretty amazing. And uh, we we're all hoping, of course, that Tom Brady would be the one waving the banner with a David Ortiz yeah, jersey. Yeah, he just doesn't wearing do that stuff like that. He's like Garbo, man. Like he just does not his do stuff PR like that. His PR reps wouldn't allow. Yeah, him. Only he doesn't TV do stuff like that. Allowed. Yeah, right. And he has a schedule. All yeah. right, so boys, um, Bruins crowd has to stay up. I'm a little nervous because the Bruins. Uh, I'm gonna have nervous energy if the Bruins get down one. All of a sudden, the Bruins crowd, you know, is gonna get silent and nervous. Oh, they're gonna be nervous, that's for sure. But I don't think that you'll, they'll get silent. I, we've Two seen, nothing, they, they might start. Yeah, to be the, quiet. the anxiety. They'll all will go start to the concession I think a one goal game. You're not going to get much variation, but to Joe's point, two goals you go up to 
it's going to be bedlam in there. Who yeah. wants a beer and off you It's going to be yeah. bedlam. And, of course, Tuka's been fantastic the whole series. Expect yeah. we need one nothing more game less. Look, I more. expect nothing less. This guy can be any soft goals by Tuka. Not a chance. I, it certainly doesn't seem like that. You know, the, I, I, the, we, I've only hit the mo- most minor of quibbles for, right. for, yeah. for six games. The most minor. Right. Right? Not one completely soft goal in six games. And Russ yeah, always te- Russ texts me every time Tuka scores, Tuka sucks. And I know <laughs> every that great save, yeah, every great, <laughs> yeah, right. every great save, I'm like, Tuka sucks. Yeah. All right, so boys, predictions. I have the Bruins winning in a wipeout 6-1. to one. Joe? I'm hoping more for along the lines of three to one, five to two. I think if you Bruins. go up, if you go up two goals, you're going to end up scoring, be empty winning netters. by four because empty netters. Yeah, They're yeah. going to pull the goalie with four and a half minutes to play. All right. After the break, we're going to talk about Big Poppy, who I love so freaking much. <laughs> this is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Look, there's one job I'll never have, and that's a Spanish translator. Mm-hmm. But watching the game six and looking at my Twitter feed while I'm watching the game, and all of a sudden I see this Spanish tweet, and it has Big Poppy, and it clearly, like, Big Poppy got shot, and it just seemed like yeah. some kind of nightmare, right? <laughs> you, you just never think those words would ever even come. And then you hear about it, and then next thing you know, an hour later, we're looking at the video. Yeah. A couple of videos, not just one video, video outside, video inside, video everywhere. Never seen that before. I mean, n- not like something like this. A celebrity within an hour, a celebrity getting you know, shot in an altercation, whatever, whatever it is, in a, in a video that goes viral. And you, this is like Jack Ruby all over it's again. crazy. And you got to hand it to the Red Sox. They stepped up immediately. Of course, you know, this guy mm-hmm. has always stepped up for the Red Sox on and off the field. But they made sure to get him out of that freaking ridiculous sent, Dominican sent hospital, right? Plain as a taxi for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, incredible. And then you knew right when he got there, they went in and did exploratory surgery, which means I don't know what those screw ups did yeah. in Dominican well, Republic, sure but we're right. going to check out, hey, uh, go know, under the hood. You right? give him credit. They kept him alive. I mean, all the all they needed to do down in the DR in that clinic was keep that guy alive until you can get him somewhere you know, safe and they stabilize him. Good for them. Is it the celebrity is I mean, obviously, you know, you think of people like I thought immediately of John Lennon. You know, I, I don't. I didn't think it was. I just thought of a, it was a, some psycho well, guy. That was Monday Night Football. Yeah, in the it was middle some of the psycho game. guy, right? Who just did it randomly. It, it felt like that, right? It didn't feel like a, a plan. It just felt like some guy one shot. Yeah, I mean, the the first reports were a little screwy. First off, they said he got shot in the leg. Remember, was the, were the initial reports, right. and then but that was the the report of with who <clears throat> got shot in the leg. Oh, right. And then the second yeah, was that's right. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, just so we clear that the up. Same bullet. Uh, uh, there was a bullet. TV. They call him a TV host who was with him uh, at the table, and the bullet went through Big Poppy and into his thigh. Yeah. And then the video comes out. Then they say it was an attempted robbery was the initial report. And then I watched the video, no. and I was yeah. like, that didn't look like any attempted robbery I've ever seen in motion pictures or anywhere else. Normally, if there's a robbery, guy walks in and says, this is a robbery. <laughs> yeah, and, and Give me your stuff. The guy doesn't go in hot. No. And, right? he, and he takes the probably uh, six figures uh, jewelry around Big Poppy's neck, first right. of all. Once Poppy's yeah. down, they're yeah. taking stuff off <laughs> yeah, of him or right. something. And then the New York media took the ball because, hey, this could be a, something salacious rather than oh, yeah. just a robbery. And they went to town. They must have sent every reporter in the New yeah. York down there. Yeah, it's very sad. But, you know, we love Big Poppy so much, truly, much more than, than – uh, Almost any player that I I can remember, really. It's yeah. and you know I, my my children were very upset. And I know your children, yeah. ever, the generation. Because remember, we're older. It's like Bobby Orr or Larry Bird yeah. got shot. Absolutely. You know, for them, yeah. right? It's the most important player in this Red Sox run by far. Yeah. 
is Ortiz. So we're thinking about you, Big Poppy, and if you need a kidney, Joe's <laughs> more than willing to give you one. I got two still. I got to be in good condition, man. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, we go to the Boston Red Sox, who are 34 and 34, and if there ever was a 500 team in the history of baseball, <laughs> it's the Boston Red Sox show. They, they just can't get in sync. They can't get hitting when they got pitching. They can't get pitching when they got hitting. They, they can't get defense when they, they, they got hitting. They, they can't get anything. They, they no. look so. mediocre. They play mediocre. They yeah. smell mediocre. Yeah. Man, there's just nothing special about this team. Okay, we had talked about it for a f- few weeks ago, and we were the first show to say that, you know, we're playing for a wild card spot at this point. <laughs> but now, of course, we are playing for a wild card spot. And our main competition for the second spot, the Texas Rangers, we've lost two straight well, to. you've been saying all year that we might be sellers and we might be selling a certain starting pitcher. Well, oh, that's a great point. Yeah, right. I mean, so we are playing for the wild card, but, you know, sure. if you lose the next two games to Texas all of a sudden, Russ, yeah. you're, you're, in, you're four or five games you, out. You really cannot get more than four or five games out in, in the race this year because we've said it the last several shows and we'll keep saying it. There are too many crappy teams in the American League to expect other teams to lose 7 out of 10. And when you get behind five games, you need someone to lose 7 out of 10. Yeah, you know, July 4th may be too late because we know in the NBA and NHL, it's by Christmas that it does. There's not much movement in the standings. It doesn't look like any time before now and the end of the season, they're going to get anyone halfway decent to the 8th and ninth inning. And that problem will continue to fester. You know what surprises me the most? And always, even the worst of Red Sox teams always play well at home. I mean, that's just Not this a one. given. Not this right. This team plays better on the road. That, which is a detriment to you, season ticket holders. Pretty tough to get rid of the. Oh game. my God! I couldn't. Oh, don't even get don't me get started. started. No, yeah. Yeah. seriously. Yeah. I could. I can't give my seats away for six bucks on StubHub. Yeah. On a weekend sometimes. Yeah. No, I'm it's so, bad. It's I'm rough. So angry but you know, there. Well, July's coming. It, it gets better in the summer. Does it, Joe? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Always has, has it. Yeah. Always yeah, the has. Ever the optimist. Yeah. All right. So the bullpen sucks. I don't care what stats you're going to throw at me. You have ten blown saves. That's ten wins that you should have had man. that you didn't. Right. And, and maybe today too. Yeah. And we're be, look. And we're behind what well, eight eight. Uh, I honestly think that until a couple of weeks ago, the bullpen wasn't the biggest problem. It's clear in the last two weeks the bullpen is now their biggest problem because they're struggling to stay in these games. And when you've got a one-run lead or a tie game or you're just trying to stay close. You know it's not happening. You can't – there's no margin for error on this team right now. Yeah. And – and Russ, you've said it before. Bullpens are made each year, right? All over, again. Oh, all over, yeah. all over again. And you never know what you're getting from one year to next. An example: so many people on the street tell me, "Oh, well, you know, we lost Joe Kelly, and that's been a huge loss." There has been nobody worse in the major leagues mm-hmm. than Joe Kelly for the Dodgers. They, they're but trying to drive him out of town. But he stayed here, he, he, you know, being the hero, he w- maybe he would have been No, better. but it just shows you that, you know, guys like yeah. Joe Kelly signed big yeah. contracts. Yeah, you got to pay. No, yeah. There's no guarantee. Red there's Sox only one pay. way to, to I think, um, secure a bullpen. It's what the Yankees did, which is you go out and you pay the cream of the crop a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Right? That I think the Yankees are showing the way, which is, like, if you want a great bullpen, you have to pay – the guys who are clearly great relievers, a lot of money. Yeah, and look, what do the Yankees have? They have like four legitimate closers. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, yeah. and you usually get quality guys when you sign big time mm-hmm. closers. All right, when we come back from the break, more Red Sox talk. Do we have- it appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden host defense. Next. A thorough stir, then another spray, and finally feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Okay, Chris Sale, we love you, and, and I don't know what that talk was. We had to hopefully have Todd and Those we, were imposters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just what? Get rid of the tapes completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Burn them. <laughs> Erase them. Uh, all right, he's not going to be a closer anymore. No. Um, no, no. Nope. We're kind of happy that he signed. Are you happy now, right now, about the no, contract? I, I've been consistent all along. I do need to see it in September and October. I don't think there's going to be an October this year, to be honest with you. So, yeah, But they'll probably shut him down in September if they're, if they're out, out of if it. They're yeah, out of why it, right? would, yeah, that why might be you? the prudent thing to do. Absolutely. 
Okay, so I've been saying this only since the Red Sox won the World Series. The guy to go is Rick Porcello, and each game we lose, Joe, he seems more likely to be going yeah, during the we deadline. Yeah, if we're winning or in, we're legitimately in the race maybe a couple of games ahead in the wild card spot, you'd have to keep Porcello. Yes. You couldn't do it. But if they're like five, six games out of the wild card spot come trade deadline, He's going to get you the most value you possibly By get. By far. Or, you know, one of your outfielders. Maybe uh, Ben and Tenney. I, 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 would, I do think it's Porcello who would get you the most because he's he's got only a half a year left on his contract. Okay, if the, the Red Sox, if yeah, the Red Sox are sellers, resume. and I hate to talk about this, but this is quite possible. If the Red Sox are sellers, JBJ here or gone? Uh, no one I don't think him. there's a lot of value in JBJ. I think he's, you know, probably considered a fourth outfielder. In All right, so you got no teams. value with him. Uh, Brock Holt, would he be a guy that yeah. would definitely he's, interest uh, teams? Yeah. And he's he a the, free agent after this. Isn't he the perfect kind of guy that most teams want to pick up at the deadline? Oh, yeah, because he could fill all the holes you have. Right. A anyone goes down late year injuries. He Absolutely. And he's a great pinch hitter. For sure. Yeah, yeah so if the Red Sox could get a, a, a – So a, a National League team could grab him too. Yeah, if the Red Sox could get a minor league a, – a quality minor league prospect, mm -hmm. a single-A guy for Brock Holt, who they may not even want to resign anyways, you got to pull the trigger yeah. on that. Xander? No, Xander, oh, no, no, no. He signed even, for like so Not long. a chance. No, the, 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 look yeah. – this is our opportunity, though I love him, and, and I don't have a bad word to say about him. This would be your time to get rid of David Price. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, that would be – you'd be giving up next year, though. You can't replace don't David Price. Up that, that kind of money at yeah. his age. Oh, I don't know, Joe. I, How look, many years does he have left? Like three I, more he has years. Three, no, but look, this is a guy now who has a history of – Performing in the playoffs where he didn't have. But you're on the hook for $100 million. No, $90 mo million after this year. Plus the rest of this year. Yeah, but he's pitched very well. And for a, a Dodgers team that's just desperate for yeah. a World Series victory, they would take You'd David You'd be basically Price. going into a rebuild scenario at that point in time. Because you you're going to so? well, you're gonna lose Porcello at the end of the year, most likely. Yeah. You could resign him. Um, but you're talking about you're down two starters, and Erod is still kind of teetering on. He's still so inconsistent. He's probably the best pitcher on the staff. And he just, yeah, but if you're Dombrowski, you sure would like $100 million to play with. And you need some, all of a sudden you'd have some Dombrowski movement. should pay some psychiatrist a million dollars a year to hold his hand and go around with him, try to figure the guy out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wow. Maybe money well spent, don't you think? See, no, Joe. look, I, I think Dave Dabrowski's done a spectacular job. Other than the Travis Shaw deal, I got no problem with anything that mm. he's done to this point. Look, bullpens are just, you know, they're, yeah, uh, they're he a didn't, hit and Look, miss. he did not yeah. sign Sandoval. He did not sign no. Hanley. Right. right, he did not sign Rusny Castillo. No, he did not. Right. Dustin Dallin Pedroia. Craig. He did Dustin not. Pedroia. Right, so he didn't make right. those signings. You know, you could you could fault him for not building a bullpen yeah. year to year, but there's very little else you can fault the guy. You got to clear that stuff off the books before you can stop blaming him. That's right. Dave Dombrowski won a World Series when he had Hanley Ramirez and Sandoval on the books. That's yeah, you remarkable, can't about that. unbelievable. Yeah. That we didn't think that was even possible. All right, again, we talked about Stephen Pierce last week, and then Dave Dabrowski, he clearly watches the show, which is great. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> but we're a fan show. We make no bones about it. And, you know, you're really not supposed to listen to us. Or you end up sitting with us. <laughs> exactly. And we have an extra spot because Timmy's not here. Another example, Nathan Avaldi. Yeah. We loved yeah. him in the playoffs, but we knew <laughs> that this guy is a regular season dud. Has and, injury yeah. problems, and look, we have basically haven't seen He'll him. He'll be on, on the DL more than he's on the bench. We haven't seen him rest doesn't all look, season. Doesn't look good. No, and so he was supposed to be a rehab, and then he has a bicep problem. Yeah. Joe, how much of this is injury, and how much of this is he's kind of soft? So, oh, wait, wait, wait hang I'm, on I'm just a second. I'm not saying soft. Soft? Yeah. Do you remember the game that he pitched no, in Dodger I know, Stadium? I, I know exactly. There's How, a difference is between soft. being a, a, like soft. a hypochondriac that is, and being soft. Insane, that is the single he's most soft. insane thing he's that you soft. have he ever said. And you've not. said so many insane soft. things. And soft doesn't mean... No, he's a hypochondriac. Wait, wait, he, no. he spends too much time wait, 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 thinking wait, wait, about wait. injuries. Somebody can, can perform at a high level one time or a few times and then be a dog the rest of the time. You don't think it's... Still, when I have dog food, he comes over. You don't perform. All you the guys time you are have soft. lost your freaking <laughs> soft as a donut. Mind. So you agree? So we got 
Well, saying, no, I'm not saying he's soft. I'm uh, saying he's a hypochondriac. <laughs> well, exactly. Are you serious? Yeah. I, 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 you don't under you don't see that a guy can get bone chips in his arm, come back. He's he's trying to get back, and he and he and he overdoes something and gets a little a bicep. And every year he says, "I got bone chips in my arm." Every because he has bone chips in his arm, Joe. Well, why don't they take them out? They did just take them out, and then they have to and take them out because he gets more bone chips. That's the point. I'm not really interested in his medical condition. <laughs> so would you I just call, want him to so I think he's got imaginary so things I, I, in the abuse. My guess is him. that you were calling Kevin Durant soft last week. No, no, of course not. That, I think that. Look, no, that, that was, was my that was, job. No, that was. But I wasn't. I'm not. You just. You. You asked the question. Absolutely not. And it's one thing. Why is one injury? On other teams, we don't bother with that. Why is okay, and you don't blame him for one injury, and then you blame Nathan Avaldi for? For his Gordon injury. Hayward now is you soft. You blame guys. You sort of very selectively blame guys for injuries. Look, so you're gonna, so, to. so Russ, you're gonna deny that that some players cannot play, can play not 100. Nathan Evaldi can't play. Pitched nine relief innings. No, I know in what he World did. I, know, I completely understand. Day what he in did. and day out, said to the manager, "I'm ready to go tomorrow." He pitched every second. And now day. he's been given some players are much more dollars. sensitive. To anything wrong with their body yeah, right, than others exactly. are. You don't think so, Nathan Avaldi was, wasn't to be, hurting in the they playoffs They have to be 100% they're, they're, to Some guys do have to be 100% or they psychologically guys, can't perform. Max, I need you to come in here no, right away. Your father has Save lost him. his mind. But he also, he help. signed a $68 million contract, and as Joe says many times, he didn't do anything until he was on the clock. Thank God we're yeah. going to break right? because I'm yeah. going to beat the crap out of both of you guys. <laughs> and and that's not true. That is insane. That is the you have you both have said Look some at insane contracts. things on this show. Oh, this is the most insane. <laughs> All you guys, are, oh, no, I think we've had five. We more give way things. too. Look, you guys give way You're too much compassion to these guys and their injuries. Really, <laughs> look at. Bergeron right now. You know the guy's got some serious internal injury, and look, he's freaking playing. I like my Bruins. <laughs> freaking Nathan Navaldi. He couldn't even right, seriously. He couldn't even wear a jersey. Well, in, in fairness, when a pitch is on for it, the you can't pitch. Celtics. Mm -hmm. low lights. Oh my God! Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoking. It looks as if smoking is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next. Another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey. Yes. Oh. My bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Well, Nathan Avaldi would be a perfect Celtic right now, wouldn't he? Right? Even Gordon Hayward would yeah. be buddy, buddy. A little Pillsbury Doughboy. I just wanted to finish that. All right, well. Where's Dougie Hamilton to make the trio? Look, guys, I've been watching. Have you watched the NBA Finals? Yeah, I watched all of it. Is it my imagination or is this become like street ball all of a sudden the NBA Finals? Not enjoyable. Quality of NBA play in this Finals yeah, has been Golden poor. State prior to this year was like. Team game you saw it was like watching San Antonio. You know you really saw the ball movement, everything. Now all of a sudden the rice are went in. Well, look, my lots of lazy plays. My, my yeah. diagnosis of it is, um, well, obviously they lost Durant, and then Toronto has a great defense and has stopped all that beautiful game kind of flow yeah. from Golden State. And then on Toronto's side, they're being dominated by one player with with one player, and it's not as pretty when you're doing a lot of ISOs with Kawhi. So I agree, it hasn't been as pretty of a series as you would have thought. Does it make you feel a little worse about the Celtics situation? Think if we had gotten in there, that you know we what, would have had a chance. Toronto is really good. Their they got a lot. Really they're a lot good. more than Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, because they make the extra pass, Joe. That and they have a like Russ was saying, oh a very God. good defense. They there's four other guys committed to playing defense, just like Kawhi is, and that it's really hard to get, like you said, to get the beautiful game going. The passing gets interrupted Mark over Gasol, and over. I mean, they got Mark Gasol at the deadline. This would be nice for addition. Toronto to win. It would be nice for a blue-collar team to win. I don't all. like them. Well, you don't like let, Toronto? Nope. Let the Canadians win the basketball one. Yeah, we'll take no, the Stanley that, Cup, now, thank you. Oh, my God, those, I'm sure. Those shenanigans that those, fan, those fans have gotten a little carried away in their own hype with their old Jurassic Park mm -hmm. crap. Yeah. And then oh, then, get throw then it. Then throw Durant goes down the other night, and then half the stadium's up. Guys are waving him goodbye. Well, Canadians have always I'm, been the worst fans. Am, they boo our national anthem. Yeah. I am out on Toronto, and I was with them up until about two games ago. Now I look at Golden State's like an underdog. I'm rooting for Golden State. I, I never would have guessed I'd be rooting for Golden State at this point. Yeah, right. Well, I like Steph Curry. Yeah, how can you Oh, not? yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. No, no, he, he seems like good a really good guy. Good personality, good player, right. good everything. Yeah. All right, you convinced me. I'll see. 
I don't want to root for Golden State, but I yeah. just find myself. I turn these games on, and I want Golden State. See, to I it. came over to the other side. Just say something you, bad you about Nathan. You just feel Navaldi. bad about the insa- <laughs> insanity you were <laughs> proffering a little earlier. All right, the star-driven league. It, you know, the, the finals is not even done, and we're hearing more and more about where the stars are going. AD, Durant, and stuff. Is this blowing up in Adam Silver's face? I, I think it'll be a little too much, especially now. So much will be made. There'll be yeah. millions of words written about Durant's injury and how it will impact yeah. the Knicks, the Nets, the Celtics. But this the talk Lakers. is is overwhelming the NBA Finals, and it should never right. do that. It's it never getting over. It's overwhelming the game. The what, game it should never count. do that. The problem is, is that these guys make so much money that. It, instead of the, them looking at these long-term extra year contracts you can sign by staying with a the team, these guys make so much money. They're okay with signing one-on-ones. And yeah. if you have a whole raft of superstars signing one-on-one contracts, guess what? Every year they're going to turn themselves over. Yeah, that's a great point. In the NBA, they make more money off the court with their shoe deal yeah. than they, they do. Right, yeah. So AD is likely to sign a one-on-one. You know, Kate, Kevin Durant has been doing that for years. LeBron's been doing one-on-one yeah. stuff for years. Well, he's never. LeBron's yeah. never cared about right. his salary. That's just been, they're yeah, always jump in play. change for him. They're always the in a- play. The average NBA player spends more on clothing per week than the average NFL player makes <laughs> that's probably in a week yeah, if you carry their weekly salary <laughs> over the year that's a joe statistic that's and you a, don't get that in 36, any other show except for joe oh the my. average is thirty six thousand a week he knows because he, knows. he, he, he goes a, to the mail man right <laughs> he has how, can they, how can you spend that much on clothes i don't know so be careful what you wish for uh because Kyrie could end up coming back to he his could. Celtics yep. uniform right and are we supposed to apologize for saying what a nut job he is not no, we didn't. We never apologized we, for any of the others we, like Ray John right. Rondo. We apologized for Kyrie a long time on this show. We were big Kyrie fans. Yeah. Even through a yeah. lot of this year, we were still saying, you know, we could turn it on. I think we're kind of all out on him, but he could be back. Look, I don't think – you know, tell me if I'm wrong. Kyrie Irving does not have the attention span anymore to win a championship. It could be. He, he might be too he's, invested in all the Uncle Drew stuff and everything. His friends and his yeah. movies, yeah. I mean, you see Kawhi Leonard, and he's invested. Uh, he's yeah. fully in, right? You, you watch yeah. the Celtics this year. None of them were fully but, in. But last uh, last year, everyone in the world was accusing Kawhi of uh, being a dog and a malingerer. Things can turn around. Well, he was hurt last year. Well, everyone oh, doubted him. He was him. hurt, but Nathan Avaldi was not hurt. <laughs> was that? He, uh, Kawhi is hurt, but Nathan Avaldi's not hurt. But Nathan Avaldi doesn't play but for the Boston team. Could, he, Kawhi and, and, could play, and they were calling him a dog. Yeah, Look, a you play for a Boston was. team, you better get your ass out there, I'm going to say yeah. something. Especially when we owe him freaking $6 so. eight million, and they were paying Dustin Pedroia for the next five years for doing absolutely squat, too. All right, this just in from the Grand Center's live desk. The Celtics will use all three draft picks. Joe, do you think so? I think they're going to be stuck with them. I don't think anyone wants no, them. I, I think um, it, it may be, you may be right on a technicality. I think they will pick you know three players. Hmm. Something Somebody's getting traded. Danny's not just standing pat and running three new rookies into this team next year. Somebody's going. Okay, so we just heard rumors before we got on the show that possibly a three-way deal between the Celtics, Lakers, and Pelicans with the Celtics possibly giving up their uh, Memphis uh, uh, protected pick. Yes. And the Celtics getting in return. No AD. He's not in the playoffs. He goes to the Lakers. Yeah. We get Lonzo Ball. That'd be interesting. Just to be clear, I'm making up this rumor. <laughs> oh, you are? Yeah, no, oh, I'm making this. This is right, a made-up rumor. That's straight out of camp. I believe, though, rumor I believe one very interesting deal would be um, flip, uh, flip the pick to L.A. for Ball, um, and then L.A. can send that pick to, to New Orleans for AD. I don't think New Orleans wants Lonzo Ball. They already have Holiday. So uh, for the 2017 – Is Holiday Supermax? So the no. 2017 draft, we would have had the second and third pick, yeah. right? Not bad, Ball right? went second. And, and if you down. believe in Ball's upside and he's, his age uh, syncs up with the age of these other young stars, it could be a very interesting deal. And, and he doesn't shoot, and we need a guy yeah, who we, doesn't we shoot. We need someone who likes to, shoot. to distribute the ball. That's right. Plays great D. And Aaron Baines, before we go, just uh, – uh, Picked up his option, so awesome. So another guy who'll be injured. Yeah, soft, season. injured, not worth the money. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Yeah. I want to thank the boys. I want to thank everyone behind the, the scenes. Alley of someday. course, William, the intern, the glue, and handsome Todd's back. Please Frank. check us. 
cameo appearance yeah, here. Please check us out on our website at thegrandstanders.com and tune in on Friday night live from the greatest bar, Dirty Water TV, yep. the Grandstanders Live, hopefully celebrating a Stanley Cup victory. Yep. My name is Scott Kerman. I'm your host. Have a great and happy Stanley Cup Finals Game 7 night.